Hello. I'm, I'm Marion Goodell, and my title is CEO of Burning Man, Burning Man Project. And CEO in the outside world, of course, means chief executive officer, which I am, but I'm also the chief engagement officer. And many of you may know that I have been part of the Burning Man organization. I think this is 20 years now. I met Larry in, 19, in the fall of 1996, and so I'm working into my 20th burn that I've helped produce. Um, I started the regional network in 1997 after, yes, after we were on private land and we were in debt. And um, this is, of course, the 10th regional, what was the regional summit, which is now the Global Leadership Conference. We grew. Is George Papp here anywhere? Uh, George Papp, I hope you all know that he is the first regional contact ever, ever. And he's still here. <laughs> Is that you, Squishelle? <laughs> I know your voice anywhere. <laughs> um, so, you know, why am I up here? Why am I in front of you? I, I was in Barcelona for the Euro Summit, and one of the questions was, are you the boss of me? Why are you here? I'm not the boss of you. I'm actually the person that, is, that was stuck with a short straw to oversee the Burning Man organization. And what for me that means is we are all a family, a community. We're, the organization is a network node, and the network node is filled with resources, and we have the opportunity to help you all and help us together bring Burning Man out into the world. So I'm not the boss of you, I'm just the facilitator that was probably there earlier on. I was kind of along the road first. Um, and the organization and the rest of us and all the staff are actually here to support and facilitate you and what you're doing in the world. So as I mentioned, the regional network goes back to 1997, thanks to George Papp, who sent me an email asking if he could help. And that's how it started, the desire to actually help assist at the time, we were in debt, but really the help was to help the storytelling out in the world. The regional network itself, of course, is experiencing great growth. We had our third European summit this year with 24 countries represented and 100 people. And the regional network also last year did a, an Asia summit in May. Larry and I actually went to that. And we had 14 countries represented, I think, and 25 people. And that one we'll probably end up doing again in 2017. It doesn't have quite the same annual, but it definitely is going to have um, a need to happen on a regular basis. So the, the organization, though, this year has actually been experiencing and is focusing on things that apply to you all. And I want to sort of touch on those a bit. The things that I feel I want to uh, mention that we have in common are volunteerism, money, and storytelling. And the organization is, as you all are, you're mostly volunteer. And percentage-wise, we're more volunteer than it would appear. Even though we have 70 year-round employees at the Burning Man HQ, we believe that we have tens of thousands of volunteers. And it's hard-pressed to find on our website how many volunteers we have, because we believe that everybody that comes to Black Rock City is contributing. And so the idea that you're a volunteer and you're contributing, we don't want to count who is and who isn't. Because theme campers and art collectives, whether they're affiliated with the organization or not, are actually see themselves as contributors. Well, we are super committed to volunteerism, and we're actually internally creating new groups and entities and ideas and expectations for ourselves to continue pushing volunteerism as one of our most important uh, principles. The other thing is around money. It's interesting to, when I was looking at the schedule to see uh, the different kinds of conversations that you all want to have. And certainly one of them is around finance and managing money and actually building organizations that can manage money. And this year we hired a rock star director of fundraising, which we're calling the director of philanthropic engagement. <laughs> Teresa, are you here? She'll be here this afternoon if she's, if she's not here now. She was here this evening. And Teresa Duncan has joined us um, and is building the fundraising department with bringing a world of experience that we've never seen before. 
Black Rock City only has so much capacity to actually fund the work that you're doing and the work that we're doing out in the world. Black Rock City is the primary entity and event that needs to maintain its uh, integrity. And we can't keep taking from it in order to do the other work. We need, need to really do fabulous fundraising. And she's the person that has the vision to help us get there. And storytelling is one of my favorites. Someone asked me the other day how it was that a bachelor's in creative writing and a master's in photography is overseeing a Burning Man organization. I know. <laughs> I said I had a lot of instinct for a bunch of other things, and again, I got the short straw. <laughs> but I'm a storyteller. My father was a great storyteller, and I still have tapes of my grandfather, who was born in 1888. My grandfather was born in 1888. He died at 90 in, in the 70s, and he was a storyteller. And I believe, and I've come to believe over the last couple of years, that what we are all really doing together and that we need to really build is storytelling, our capacity for storytelling. If you think about it, thank you. If you really, really think about it, like how, what happens when you use the word Burning Man? People want to know, or they tell you what they think. And you're all engaged in active storytelling. And internally in the organization, we sort of, we've been talking about this for a couple of years, and from the position that Megan Miller and the communications team sit, they're like, well, what, which of the stories are we gonna tell? Which ones are we gonna focus on? And even the fundraising department says, which ones are we gonna focus on? And I think focusing is important, but I think really embodying and understanding and accepting that our role for all of us is as storytellers. So we're faced with the challenges out at our events. We're faced with leadership challenges, volunteerism, managing money. We're faced with government challenges. But the thing that each one of us, I really feel, can do is to develop your ability to tell the story of Burning Man in a way that doesn't necessarily cause more people to go to Black Rock City or cause more people to go to your events but really gives them insight on what it is about the culture that actually can change the world. And it's not easy. There's not a bunch of bullet points. There's not a web page. It's not a series of, of, of books you can read. It's sort of a curriculum. Burning Man is definitely a way of life, and it's a way of looking at yourself in the world. And if you can look through the lens of yourself and the lens of others, I think the story in who you are and how you got there and then listening to the stories of those around you will give you insight on how to best tell the story. Because you will have different audiences, and who you are and what you're doing is different from maybe the other person. But one of you, that's one of your leadership challenges, and it's one of the organization's challenges that we're really feeling strongly about this year. We have, done, we have um, the burning, uh, the, the, burn, the, the Toastmasters. And I think they're doing a breakout here. They did yesterday. And that effort started from this feeling that we really wanted to give our staff every opportunity, whether we can do it organizationally or whether they can do it themselves, is to teach ourselves the best skills to be able to stand in front of other people. We're spending more time out on the road. We're being invited. And it's not just me or Larry or Harley or Will or Crimson or Michael, but we're giving other staff opportunity. And we're actually starting to hear from you all that you're doing TEDx you're doing talks, we've heard about rotary talks, and we're here to help and support you in doing that work. So the organization is here to help. We have resources, we're here to help you. I feel that um, what we're doing is being inspired by you. I'm not here to tell you what to do, I'm really here to learn from you. I had an experience yesterday, actually, that really touched me and reminded me each year before I stand in front of you, I always have that one person that sort of comes in front of me and gives me a little bit of a, of a story or a grounding. I wondered if Michael Shortsleeve is here. Michael, so Michael's the, the, you can see him waving his hand way in the back of the room. You can see him later. Are you wearing a red shirt? Great, Michael Shortsleeve is wearing a red shirt. You should meet Michael Shortsleeve. He's awesome. He's awesome. First of all, if you look in the books, you won't see his face because his name was accidentally, someone else's face is there. It's another Michael. It's another Michael. 
which is the irony of the whole story, is that he came up to Meg's while I was sitting outside after my tech check, and he very awkwardly said to Megan, um, this isn't me. Megan says, this isn't you. And, and he's like, well, is there anything we can do? And Megan's like, I don't know what we can do. And he's like, but it's not me. <laughs> and I could tell that he had a story to tell, because I figured it was, well, we, Michael, do you want to come show your face? <laughs> I'll, I'll tell the story. I'll tell you about Michael as he comes up so you can see his face. So Michael is um, from Texas and Arkansas. And to me, hello, Michael. And you can correct me if I get any of your story wrong, but you really touched me. I actually had to not cry when you told me your story. Uh, Michael is from Texas and Arkansas, and he was, you may have been involved with a Texas event, but was invited by the Arkansas folks to come and be a ranger lead. And he said he had never taken on that much responsibility before, but he was asked to do it, and he went and did it. And then he said he spent 75% of his time working the event. And I said, well, that's what happens when you take leadership. And he said, yeah, I was ready for it. I, I, it was a lot of responsibility. He said, we even had an assault. Turns out his fiance was socked by someone in the, as you go around the eff effigy and, and someone's getting aggressive. And I said, wow, how many people did you have? And he said, 65. <laughs> now I know, it sounds like, whoa, that's not that much. But for Michael, it was a lot. And when the, uh, when the Arkansas folks learned about the regional summit or the GLC here, they said none of them could afford to go. But Michael put his money aside to come here. He made a choice not to buy a Black Rock City ticket, but to come here. He said, I might get to go this year, I don't know, but I needed to come here. I'm going to bring the information back to Arkansas. And I said, well, you don't have to go to Black Rock City. He said, I really want to go. And he also told me more about himself. He told me that he is a chef, that he went to culinary school, and that he is helping produce and leading the charge to do a Burners Without Borders 200-person sit-down dinner that he is going to help lead as a fundraiser. And so yesterday, when we were, I said 65 people, and you're, you're, you're going to look forward to growing the event. And he said, he said, well, yes. And I said, are you going to go into the, the scaling conversation with Charlie and Playground? And he said, no, I'm going upstairs to the diversity conversation. He said, I'm part Native American and Italian, and I want to see how you are accepting other races. So Michael, to me, touched me that he is a person of different colors and generations, which is who we are. He is a person that is dedicated to taking what he knows how to do and raise awareness and money for Burners Without Borders. And he is stepping into leadership the first time in his life with a 65-person event and saving his money to come here instead of Black Rock City. Because when, he, as he said to me, just the same that happens to every one of us, he said, when I met people and met Burners, I realized I'd found my family. And it's people I wanted to be around. Did I do OK? Every single one of us. I, that's why I got choked up when I met him. And Megan had walked away at this point. And I realized every single one of us had been at that point. If not you, then those before you. Every single one of our events has been 65 people. And we've turned and looked to try and find a leader. And we've turned and looked and wanted more information about how to build our event, how to build our volunteers, and how to manage money. The, women, uh, the woman who he's, he's traveled here with or you're friends with in the area from Texas, she had just come out of the entity discussion. And she said, oh my god, OK, there's so much information here, but I have their cards. <laughs> because they now are thinking about when they make the money, then what do we do with it? So I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I'm sorry your photo wasn't in, but you are <laughs> fabulous. <laughs> It means everything to me. I, when I was asked by a reporter the other day, why do you do this? I do this because of the people I meet, more than anything else. I love being an administrator. I love overseeing what's happening on Burning Man. I love 
helping make things happen, but I really, really, really enjoy meeting the people. Like Megan said, I lean in and just listen, and I really enjoy who you all are. So thank you for doing the work that you're doing out in the world. Thank you for letting me take a sip and make sure that I'm hitting all my notes here. Um, I wanted to mention that we have another important new hire this year, which is Kim Cook. I don't know if Kim is here. Hi. She's there. Hi, Kim. <laughs> Thanks, Kim. Kim is the Director of Arts and Civics for the Burning Man Project. And her role is also as important as the new role with Teresa. We're bringing the arts and the civics together, so that's Burners Without Borders, and that's arts out in the world, and arts in the world, or in Black Rock City, and she's driving things out further than we've had them driven out before under one person, which is fabulous. Thank you, Kim. Um, we have to, is there any other things about regional stuff that you wanted me to hit? Because I think I've hit everything. Well, the Europe. So Europe, um, <laughs> So Megan came to me at one point in the fall and said, um, I think I need to be in Europe. And I was like, you need to be in Europe. And I said, think that through and then come back. And she thought it through and she came back. And look, had, took a look at the goals that we're working on internally in the organization. And she said, here's the deal. If we're going to expand, it would be great to be out there in the middle of the conversation and help us expand. The first thing we did a year ago was you met Misha. And Misha is a fellow. She's one of our regional fellows. And we will, over time, periodically look for fellows that we can actually then guide into leadership, into what needs to be done and where. And part two is Megan saying, there's so much work for Misha, and there are things that we haven't taught Misha yet. I need to be there. So Megan is piloting and has spent the first couple of months this year in Europe. And she'll spend more time through the rest of this year and maybe the following year in Europe. And what she's doing is sort of almost what I did and some of the other founders did in the United States, which is when we're asked by government organizations, and that's actually happening, when we're asked by large corporations to, to explain what Burning Man is about or how they can affiliate, Megan's been with the organization nearly 10 years. And instead of me getting on an airplane, Megan's going to be able to be boots on the ground, take Misha with her, do it herself, have the conversations, and again, spread the network and make the web even bigger and also then mentor and work closely with the European regionals. And the last part about Europe and their growth that is worth mentioning is while we were there in um, Barcelona, I initiated a conversation about something kind of secretly near and dear to my heart, which is a pan-European event. And what would that mean? That basically is there are a lot of smaller events. There are 250 people, 500 people. Nowhere is 1,200 people. Um, I'm, I'm watching the way in which Europeans are trying to come to Black Rock City. I'm watching the growth in ticket interest. And um, I felt it was important to get the group together and actually ask, have them ask themselves the question, are you ready for a, an event that's larger than what you're doing right now? Are you ready to cross borders and do something bigger than nowhere? Nowhere has limitations. Um, are you ready? And that conversation is thriving on a list. There are a number of individuals that are interested in talking about it more. And when we're in Stockholm next year, it'll be part of the conversation that we'll have. So um, the only other part of that then to note would be that we are actually now going to affiliate with the Dutch burners. And there'll be a Burning Man Netherlands. Um, they'll be using the word Burning Man, actually, for their event this year, which is Come, yeah, it's a big deal. Um, and that came through the group, uh, starting their nonprofit from scratch, um, emulating our nonprofit, our programs, and our 10 principles in their nonprofit. So they emulated um, the Burning Man Project so closely and then gave us a board position, of which I'm fulfilling at this point. Um, and they're, they're going to have an event this summer. How big it will be, I'm not quite sure. Um, but they're also endeavoring, they're a festival culture, if you've ever been to Holland, the festival culture there is fabulous. Um, and I believe that they're going to be able to, to, um, to do something fabulous, and then they're going to rock it. And then there's my timer. And then whether we need, um, whether we need a pan-European event or not, through that, uh, through the work, <laughs> thank you, now I'm done. It's perfect, actually. 
Um, and we'll see how that affects um, pan-European event and the other smaller events, but the Dutch are actually gonna do a, a Burning Man Netherlands this year. So yeah, it's kind of cool. So if um, there should be a microphone somewhere, yeah. Hello. It works. That sounds like it works. You can go ahead and raise your hand if you have a question. We'll start here. Hi, I'm Patty Hi. Cole from Seattle. Hi, Patty from <laughs> Seattle. And we've been hosting Europeans at our camp for the last ten years, mm -hmm. and I just have to say that camps like ours, old camps that have huge infrastructure are ideal for hosting uh, people from other countries. And our camp actually came together as the dream camp I always thought it could be 20 years ago. Once we opened the What's your the question? Doors. So, <laughs> is there, uh, what I would like to see happen is a way for big camps like us to be able to offer invitations to people from Europe and make that a real easy thing. Do you think that could be worked into? Well, I think that's sort of up to you all to also network together and if you're a theme camp leader for the theme campers to actually put that out um, as an opportunity and sort of discuss it amongst yourselves. I don't really want to implement something like that. Um, the Europeans actually, once they get the tickets, don't so have as much trouble finding a place to camp. Some of them even camp geographically similar. It's more about um, actually getting the tickets um, and making the commitment. If you don't get tickets, as you all know, if you don't get tickets early enough, um, then you know the, your travel and your airfare and things like that are all affected. Um, and it's very expensive. It's bad enough to come from Florida or New York, but it is incredibly expensive to come from any um, country from Europe. Um, I see Finland nodding his head and smiling. <laughs> um, you have a question? There's, there's the microphone. Yes. So last year uh, we participated. Uh, Who's we? we Who's sorry? Who are you? Martin from Argentina. Thank you. It's also expensive to come. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so, but last year we were organized, we participated and collaborated with other groups in the SUG, and we were organized with placement, like in a regional a village, and the other was, was like a cluster. Mm -hmm. I think that was really smart, was kind of um, like bringing regionals together. Do you think you are going to continue trying to put regional groups or regional contacts near so they can have a similar experience like this, but more uh, like the, not uh, close, but open to, to then to uh, like contact and make relations in the burn? I don't oversee the event production at all, mm -hmm. but by asking, thank you, <laughs> Charlie does, um, but by asking that question, um, I'm sure you're heard, I just saw Megan moving, Megan Ritigliano moving along, um, and she'd be the one to translate that question to the team. Thank you. Yep. Uh, we are working on it. Actually. We are working on it. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Mowgli says, yes, we're working on that. Hello. Right here? Hi, Marian. You're, you're up, and then? You, and then upstairs. And then you, and then one upstairs. Great. Cool. My Hi. name is Alon Vision, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, or from Israel. Uh, last night during the Midburn dinner that we had, that, uh, we were very grateful to have you out there. Uh, you kind of gave a few words, and you explained about the moment you were sitting in the Elat and looking on Egypt and Israel and... Saudi Arabia and Jordan and like things bubbly and pop in our head and we say, this is it. I mean, the magic of Burning Man is happening and the bigger change is happening. You're gonna make me tell that story? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have two more questions that have already been lined up. Helen's telling me I have to go off the stage, but I was told I had 10 minutes of questions and that they weren't gonna be shortened. Katiana. Um, uh, if, if everyone is comfortable having five minutes between sessions, then we can take all three of the questions. Yes. You do have to get all the way to the 10th and 11th floors. And there is coffee on this floor, the 10th floor, and the 11th floor, but only for the first people who get there. 
So we have five minutes. Is everyone cool with that to take three more questions? Yeah. Wonderful. We can take three questions. OK. Um, that's a story that uh, takes a couple of minutes to tell. So in few words, how do you see it happening? I, I, was, I was in Israel, um, and I was at a wedding on the top of Solomon's Mountain. And across the Red Sea was Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. And I, this is a real true story. This was in June of 2014. And I've always been supportive of Larry's vision that we are going to change the world. But I've often wondered how we can affect war-torn parts of the world, how we can affect poverty. And to be on this wedding trip with a bunch of burners standing at the corner of four countries that are engaged in a very difficult political dialogue, religious dialogue, I actually realized that the energy that was coming from the burners and the way they were feeling towards each other even though half the group were actually not burners. Of the 400 we sat down for dinner, I really did realize at that moment that what we were doing with Burning Man was worth it, and it was powerful, and that we actually could change the world. Yeah. And it did. It happened while in Israel. Um, thank you. Thank you. It's a long, there's a longer version, but that's the short of it. Uh, Scott o from Arizona. First, I want to thank Hi, you Scott for o. 20 years of dedicating your life and stewardship to Burning Man. Thank you. So I'm going to throw out an arbitrary date, January 2019. If on that date money was not an object, what would be the first three things the Burning Man Project would do? Well, I would have the Global Leadership Conference at the Moscone Center. <laughs> And we would have theme camp leaders and all community leaders in all parts of the world and art collective leaders and art car collective leaders. And we'd have anybody that would want to engage in the Global Leadership Conference actually, actually able to. That would be, that's exactly what I would want to do at the beginning of that year. Uh, thank you. And I'm not, I, that's, that's full on. Um, and then I'd want to make sure that we had a really robust system in the Burning Man organization to actually support leadership and volunteerism as it comes out from the organization. So the storytelling and the tools, whether they're online or in person, um, that the, what we're actually successfully doing around leadership and volunteerism, because to me they're, they're sort of they're hand in hand together, um, that we were actually able to tell the world whether you go to Burning Man in Black Rock City or not, but that the principles of leadership, the principles of Burning Man were easily adopted for people that are doing leadership in companies and in other NGOs. Um, and then I think the third one would probably be um, that we had tackled the fundraising question of how to fundraise and also be burners and how to be Black Rock City and Burning Man and Burning Man Project, that we had figured that storyline out so that the, the way in which uh, you all need funding, art groups need funding, the organization needs funding, that we had an ecosystem um, that we had figured out and that we were um, endeavoring to, to build. Thanks, that's a great question. Thanks for taking me there. Is there a question up above? And then I think we're starting to lose everybody. Upstairs? No? Is there one more downstairs? Are we done? Helen, do you want to kick me off the stage? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.